full attendance and it's seven o'clock. So we're going to open the meeting, call the order. Do we have any additions to the agenda, Bruce? Not for me. From anybody else? No. Under penalty of death. Mr. has the camera turned off. That's good. I'm not my either. <clears throat> Okay, we don't have any we don't have any additions to the agenda. Um, public comment. I see it could be public here. Public comment. I don't see anything. Um, so I'm gonna turn the meeting over to East Montpelier Fire Department. Or okay, let me let me call Callis to order. Yep. Um, Rick, are you here? Rick, are you there? Awesome. Hey, Rick, I was going to I was going to introduce you to Rick. He's our a new board member, um, and a couple other board members had some last minute personal stuff come up. So we don't have a quorum, but I'll still call it to order. Um, I just talked to Rick, and he was going to be signing in. So hopefully he can join us. And I don't see is there public comment or additions or changes to the Callus agenda? Guess not. All right, hi everyone, beautiful day. <laughs> hi. Oh, there's Rick. Yeah, sorry, it took me a minute. Yeah, I just called the meeting to order, Rick. We don't have a quorum, but um, Katie's gonna take minutes. Okay. So I, was gonna, I was gonna introduce you to the, I'm just gonna introduce you as our newest board member. Is he going and under the, an alias? Is that that Melanie? That's yes. it. I, <laughs> Melanie is Rick. Yes. I am. I am. I've got the I forgot my mustache and plastic glasses, but okay, so Melanie is Rick or Rick is Melanie. That's your newest board member? Yes. That is. So Rick. There's, there's one and you have Rose here too, right? No, Rose is not so on the I, board anymore. I am I am I am now Rose. <laughs> You're Rose. Yeah, excuse me. I think Rose is Rose. Nice oh, to yeah. see everybody. Rose is here. <laughs> Thanks. Nice to see you. Den Denise, do you know who is on your select board? Just out of curiosity. Uh, Say what? Do you know who yeah. is on your select board? Yeah. 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 Okay, so you have Rose and Melanie. No, Rose is no longer on the board. Oh, okay. Oh, so you got just uh, Melanie then? Yeah, just Mel <laughs> Melanie, aka Rick. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, everybody set for the East Montpelier presentation to the joint select boards. Is that Toby? Yes, that's Toby. That's Toby. I, okay. Um, so the agenda, the first thing is financials. I will put the financials I sent you up on the screen and uh, we can have a discussion about it. If there's questions, uh, step right up. You're, go you're going over the balance sheet? Yeah. Nope. That's not the balance sheet. There we go. Profit and loss. Got it. Assets. Assets right here. Seems like a lot in your checking account, or I'm misreading it. Um, yes, there's a lot in the checking account, and we'll explain. We'll explain some of that. Okay. Any other questions on the balance sheet? Looks good. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, profit and loss by class. So this is the two the two um, budgets side by side. Uh, expenses and income. So the one thing that's new here is COVID. So if you'll see here that we got a COVID grant for 17,995 to cover unexpected expenses for PPE and other COVID related equipment. Okay, which which um, number are you looking at? Is it COVID, 
COVID grant for expenses under ordinary income. Seventeen thousand okay. nine hundred and ninety-five. And there's also a COVID hazard pay in the amount of forty-two thousand one hundred and fifty-five dollars. So that is gone directly to the paid staff as a, a bonus to them directly from the state for putting up with the hazard of responding to COVID during the, the last year. So that's almost $60,000 we didn't expect to have as part of our income. Everybody understand that? Uh, no, when you say that has gone directly to the paid members, is that the, both of those lines or just the second one? Just the second one. Thank you. And, and this other line is to reimburse us for COVID related expenses such as PPE and disinfectant and other materials of that sort. Uh, how many, uh, did you have carries that were direct COVID emergencies or just you had to disinfect just to be sure? Well, every patient we went to was a possible COVID person. So every time we went, we had N95s, goggles, gowns, and stuff. And essentially, everybody was putting themselves at risk every time they went with an uncertain patient. OK. We, 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 did, we, we did transport COVID positive patients, as well as some that were potential COVID positive patients. OK. All right, and so the hazard pay you just distributed among the, or did you just, I'm not sure how you distributed that. So, so essentially anyone who responded during that period of time was eligible for a, for a lump sum as far as each individual. And I don't remember what the total number was. There were actually two rounds of it. There was one round for about 19,000 and then there was another round of 20, 20 plus thousand. So they, they, you know, essentially everyone who worked during that period, if you didn't work, you didn't get the hazard pay. It's only yeah. the people that were actually going out on calls during the period of time. Yeah. Was that, was that tax free? No, no. <clears throat> okay. So essentially that money is in our expenditure, but it's really also um, covered by the state income that came in. Right. So it's in and out. So it doesn't really affect what we, you know, it's not like we have $40,000 in our pocket. It came in, it went out. Yeah. And it doesn't have anything effect on the, on the, on the fire department or ambulance budget. Yeah. Yeah. It just the inflated only, those two numbers. Right. The only thing that, that is effective is for expenses. And as you, as you get down here lower, you'll see that there is COVID related supplies. Yeah. 9,480. Yeah. So essentially, we continue to have probably close to seven thousand dollars to spend before the end of the year in that yeah. line item because of the income. Right. Is eighteen thousand, and we spent nine and a half. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm, well, I'm glad. I'm glad some folks got a, a bonus. That's great. Right. Well, they put their lives at risk for you, so um, they deserve it. Um. Everybody's looked at this. Do you have any other questions about line items? Essentially, it's just, um, you know, at the end of February, it's eight months in. Um, there's nothing that's really seems out of ordinary. The only other um, thing that we could look at is as of the end of February, we've already received 111,000 in revenue from um, insurance. So yeah, I was gonna say the insurance so you're Line ahead item is, is high. Well, that's well, good. In more that's, than that's money coming into us. Right, that's more than usual. It is, and it's right. right. Now I'm looking. I'm looking at expenses. Oh. Well, and, and again, just remember, there's um, almost fifty thousand dollars of expenses that came in and went out. Right. <clears throat> but it so, shows that they. It shows that the insurance uh, cost those, I think what Denise is saying is $30,000. 37. Right. 30,750, right? I'm sorry. 37, no, 37,000. Right, exactly. But that's combined, well. Yeah, that's the two combined. Yeah. 
And what's the budgeted amount for the year? Yeah, that's what I don't see is what was budgeted. That's the same as salary. I was just curious to know what the budgeted amount was for salary. I mean, we spent 207. I guess that's an inflated figure because that includes the 42,000. So right. 207 is where we're at as, as expenditure through February. The budget is 273, 786 right there. Mm -hmm. We have 66,000 left to spend before the end of the year on salary. Right. It's a little bit high because we're staffing two people in the day and two people at night and some people overnight. So we're doing what we had told you we were going to do and telling you that um, we were probably going to be over budget on that particular line item because we're staffing um, very fully to have the ambulance go out and not have days when there's only one person on. Right. And that's why that number is higher. And, um, you know, next year's budget, you guys are going to put another 37,500 in there, which is really where it's going to end up topping out at because that is a full staffing model. Yeah. So you'll be a little over your thinking by June 30th. Well, if you go in eight months, you should be shooting for your budget at about 66%. And that That's salary right. item is now at 75. Right. So it's 10% over budget right now. Right. And it's not going to drop because that's where we're trending. In, yeah. order to, in order to get, you know, daytime and nighttime, two people on for, you know, essentially from seven right, in the right. morning till midnight. Yeah. But isn't that 207 inflated because of the 42 or is that not included? No, if you look just below that, there's the 42. Oh, seat. I see it. It's separated yeah. out as a, we did that intentionally so that we could actually track yeah. what the real, real salary impact was. Yeah, I got it. Okay. This is, this just sits here all by itself. No, no, I got it. Yeah. Um, any other questions on the ambulance budget? Did the answer, was the answer given for people to understand what the budget was for the insurance? I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that figure. What was the budget? So the, the ambulance is 30750 for primarily workers comp portion of payroll. And then the fire budget is the 40000 for insurance, which is largely the operational insurance and the building insurance. So it, we're talking right here. So the budget line for insurance is 30,000. That's workers comp. That's a portion of payroll. And that's what's, that's what's in the insurance line. You have your workman's comp rolled yeah, in. So, so this is only workers comp on the ambulance side. Okay. There's nothing else there. It's just workers comp. And that's the number. It's just what you pay based on your, on your payroll. Right. So our payroll at 200 and, 73,000, there's a $30,000 workers' comp premium. Yep. So why, why does it say salary Marshfield? Because Marsh, we, we started them separately and it was part of what they do. So essentially, it's going to be just what we get, collect from Marshfield. It was just, um, it's just another way to do that. It's part of the total, it just has a separate line by itself. Any other questions on ambulance? So moving on, this is the fire budget. We've received all the funds from the two towns. And you can see here we're at 53% instead of 66. So we're actually under budget right now on the fire side. Um, so wood, wood pellets is really is that the right line with pellets 159%? Right. So we so we took an extra load of pellets this um, spring because there's another uh, community group uh, that buys pellets. And in order for them to get a full delivery of a truck, they have to share with us. <clears throat> so we added a little, you know, almost another five, 15 tons of pellets in this fiscal year. It's, it's just a timing thing. So we had an extra delivery that we didn't have last year. So it's going to fall in here.
Any further questions? Bookkeeping budget's way up. That must be because you hired a different bookkeeper. Pardon me? Your bookkeeping budget's way up, right? Yeah, that's because we have Father Gill um, re do reports for us every month. Um, and, and we're actually starting to, you know, because we finally developed this so it's easy for her, th that should essentially flatten out. Yeah. Um, it doesn't require that much time. And, you know, when she comes to a, an EMFD board meeting, now we can cover these things in five or 10 minutes instead of an hour when we were trying to make decisions about how to display all of this. Okay. And your bank charges, I assume that's rubber checks or something? Uh, I can't tell you what that is. I don't know exactly what those things are. But it must be a small amount because it's only it's only thirteen dollars over budget, Seth. Right, I got it, but <laughs> it does say one hundred fourteen percent. I know, and that's the only thing you. That's the only thing you look at is how much over it is. Well, that's that's one uh, parameter that we should be looking at. Right, but if you look down here, we're at fifty fifty three. So instead I got of, it. Yes. Yeah. So you averaged it out, and you're only fifty three. Oh, Congratulations. Wow. Right, because we are we're managing the money for you guys very well. Very well, right. You took the words right out of my mouth, actually. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that's it on financials, unless there's any other questions. What's what's this back? What's the vaccination contract? What does that mean? Oh. Um, so that's something that just came up. So essentially, the state of Vermont it has reached out to ambulance and EMS services to help them be vaccinators. Oh. So we trained almost 20 people to actually participate. Um, we have an open-ended contract with them for up to $100,000. So essentially, this is just like the hazard pay. When people work to vaccinate, they get paid and we get reimbursed directly from the state. So it literally has no, uh, no impact on the budget. It just comes in and goes out. And we're, what we're doing is paying the people that, that um, get called to be vaccinators at these um, state-sponsored point of deliveries. So just on the insurance, on the revenue side for the ambulance, mm -hmm. what's it usually at? at two thirds of the year. Isn't it under a hundred thousand? Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's very high right now, which is great. Um, you know, last year, the to last year, the total at the end of the year was $140,000. Right, and so that was we high. Four, we have four months left and we're at 111 already. Yeah, it's a lot. It is. We work hard to make that, uh, to bring those, those uh, funds into the town. Okay. Careful, your arm is getting sore from patting yourself on the back, but that's okay. Well, I, I want you to hear the good news. <laughs> okay. So that sounds good. Good. Anything else? No, it looks good. All right. I will uh, turn it over to the chief. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, so you guys received in your packet the transport statistics. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and um, you have on there, on your first page on the tra ambulance transport statistics, we have a total of 348 up to date, and 139 of those were no transport to 209 transports. And then you can see by town. Um, what the category totals were by town for transports versus no transports. Yeah. Any questions on that page? Hearing none, your second page is the cost statistics total. And even though it says 2018 on the top, uh, these are the current year. Um, you can see on the bottom, this is inclusive of all fire and medical. The grand total to date is 468 of where we are currently. 
that puts us on track to be in that 650, 700 calls a year range. So these are all the calls that you got? These are all the calls, yeah. Okay, ambulance and fire. Ambulance and fire. All right. And so, I, assume, I assume a lot of these are mutual aid, Berlin, Berry City. Um, but yes, those are um, Northfield. We've been to Northfield a couple of times, Peachum for fire. Um, so yes. Those aren't on here. But, they are uh, down the bottom. They're at the, oh, bottom. Down the bottom. Where it says other, the other yeah. is actually Northfield, and it's okay. just not in our system because that's not a regular. And then Peachum is the one on there. Um, well, that's an ambulance, right? No, those are uh, the Peachum is a fire, and then there's a medical one as well. Yeah. Oh, there's two separate ones. Okay. All right. Barry City's had quite a few fires since um, the end of the year, so we've been going there frequently. Yeah, there's been a couple I've seen on the news. Pretty, pretty wild. They've had some very fortunate ones with people trapped that they've been able to get to fast enough to save them. Yeah, it's great. Any questions on the call logs? I just have one question. I thought sure. I thought you weren't issuing burn permits, and there's 49 visits to people's homes for burn permit. So burn permits that is through the start of the year till now. We are not currently issuing burn permits over this two week period. Um, we started on Monday until two weeks from now, and then we'll reevaluate based on weather conditions and how dry it is. But during a COVID pandemic, I I believe that there weren't burn pits a burn. Burn permits allowed, right? Um, there was a period of time last year where we didn't run burn permits because, or open burning because of the, again, primarily because of the weather conditions and how dry it was with the drought. And as you can see, as we start into the spring, it's mm -hmm. early, but we're already in drought conditions now that we need significant rain. So even though the snow just melted, everything is dried off with the breezes we've been having. Right, yeah. I was just surprised there was 49, that's all. Yeah. I was kind of surprised. Well, that's that's year to date. I mean, there was times last year when they issued permits. So <clears throat> they're not issuing now because it's too dry. And there was times last year they didn't issue because it's too dry. But there was other times they did issue permits. So right. year to date, 49. I mean, they, they added a large brush fire into it right now in uh, Northfield, Berlin, over in the town over there. They've got five or six agencies out on that. We had gone to Northfield for a structure fire, a second alarm structure fire uh, a week and a half ago and to add brush fire as part of that as well. So mm. see how it goes. We'll hold the permits in check for right now. And, you know, we're going to see a little bit of rain over this weekend, but it doesn't look like much. No, we need rain badly. Yeah. Dry in Florida too. Wicked dry. <clears throat> Any other questions on the call logs or types of calls or where we've been for calls? Nope. Okay. Nope. Um, community programs. Um, we do have masks available from the Ford mask program. We get, we're able to hand out if people need masks. And um, we've gotten rid of some out there to the community, but we still have some left. So if people need them or you want some at the town offices, let us know. We have some bags available. They can be handed out. We cannot use them on our ambulance because of the uh, specifications for them and confined space don't meet the standard for that, but they meet the standard for general use. Um, just an update kind of quick on the holiday programs. Again, even in the downturn of the economy and everything through the COVID, we had an exceptional uh, year through the holiday program. We had um, 38 families combined between Christmas and Thanksgiving with 38 children at Christmas time. But we also had additional donations that had come in. So we were able to make donations to the food shelves at the Brick Church here in East Montpelier, the Senior Center here in East Montpelier, and the Woodbury Callus Food Shelf. Uh, the other one is our smoke detector CO program. We've been able to Finally, re-inventory our smoke detectors. 
during the, the COVID struggle of getting supplies and things, we haven't been able to get the ones we need uh, for our program where if we go out to residents, whether it's for a, a faulty detector activation or for other reasons, and it's determined that people need a smoke detector, we will leave one for them. They're battery operated smoke CO combos with that 10 year lithium battery in them. Any questions on any of those or comments? Okay, hearing none. Um, we did receive a, a callous notice of non-renewal and just a couple of things that are going forwards with that is we'll have to have some determination of agenda and timeline and how we accomplish this with the three parties um, for the interlocal agreement, which has been in place since 2009. Any comments or questions on that? Okay, hearing no comments or things on that, we'll have to um, work to establish a program going forwards on that. The uh, final item on the agenda was uh, Capital West, and that was a question from Callis. So we'll let Callis ask that question. Yeah, you know, I don't know if everybody else receives these very long emails from Stephen, what's his last name? Whitcomb or Whitaker or something? Steve Whitaker, he periodically sends out these emails yeah, and I've it's seen. hard to, and it's hard to, I don't know who they all go to because most of the time it's all BCC. And he's been raising all kinds of issues about Capital West and money and all this stuff. So I just wondered if you got, if you guys had any insight and could help us understand what he's talking about. Does that does does Eastmont come here? Do you get those emails from Steve Whitaker? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah I, I don't. I don't respond. But it's just every little while, you know, he'll bombard us with a couple of very long detailed emails. So I just wanted to see if the fire department's getting them and if you have any in insight into what he's talking about. Well, he doesn't sound unreasonable with his observations, so. No, he doesn't. And that's the thing, he doesn't sound unreasonable. He sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Right, and I, I know that Bruce has been forwarding them on to the rest of the select books. I think he gets them. Um, but we don't really know, you know, what the plan is with Capital West because it seems like that's what he's alluding to. Right. What's going to happen in the future? I don't know. Have you been getting those, um, Toby or Ty? So what's going on currently with Capital West and the CVPSA um, group is there's currently a survey survey being done of all radio equipment, well, including towers. There's going to be a survey sent to all the fire chiefs to inventory all of our mobile radios, all of our portable radios, basically taking an overview look of what the current um, capabilities are of the system for each agency, as well as what the problem areas are for each agency in terms of communication. Uh, some of the other things in terms of Capital West that we're working on is part of this is the, looking at the upgrade to tower capabilities. If you, it was simulcasting, which means that all towers can talk to each other and dispatch at the same time. If you think of yourself standing in a circle, right now you talk one direction and talks to one tower. If dispatch needs to talk through another tower to reach the farther region, they actually have to manually switch to another tower to be able to transmit. So part of what the survey is looking at and part of what the future um, estimations are on equipment is to create the ability for each tower to talk to itself independently all at one time. So when there's a broadcast done, it would go through the whole region, the other, which will enhance our capabilities of communication in the field. The other thing that's being worked on, that's been worked on for a number of years in trying to get full resolution to, 
is changing our frequency that we're on currently because of the traffic overfeed. We receive a tremendous amount of traffic overfeed. From, you got to explain. You got to explain what that is. I, I'm working on that. So from Canada, they can talk from Canada and they can override our radio systems down here, and so it can cause a lot of additional traffic. It may not all be emergency traffic based on how they use the frequency up there. And what happens is it gives us a lot of background noise or override where dispatch has to sort through all of that additional um, communications through on the frequency and may or may not be able to hear us at times when we talk because the channel may be locked out by the override yeah. communications going on. So we've been in the process of getting new frequencies through the FAA and that's coming or not FAA, sorry, FCC, uh, and that is in the works. We're very close. We have one more tower in Walden that we need to get approved uh, to get the frequency change. And once that happens, then we would, we would have to go through all of the agencies, change all of our radio programming to be able to switch to this other frequency. And that includes pagers, portable radios, mobile radios, truck radios, base radios. Where's all the money going to come from? So part of this survey and part of where this would come from is there is potentially federal grants that are available to pay for part of this. Um, there may be other revenues that need to come from financing long term for some of the purchase of the equipment that would go into place as well. Those answers are not in place currently. There has been nothing finalized and established. The final quotes for all of this are not complete. And um, that's where everything is at within the Capital West system currently. So, and when he keeps, and then in some of the emails, he talks about the um, people on this Capital West board or whatever, however it's made up and who makes those appointments. How does that, I mean, are you Somebody from East Montpelier and for Callis Woodbury serves on some a committee there. Is that what, the way I understand it? The Capital Fire and Mutual Aid, which is made up of 22 <laughs> towns, all has representation on the committee or on the in the board. We meet regularly, and then they, within that, there is a communications committee that's a subcommittee of four people that participate and re review pieces like this. They're working with a CVPSA. What I can tell you is that I I'm not going to um, get into the semantics of the emails you're receiving. What I would tell you is when there is official information to be released in an official capacity, it will be released. Other released? than that, this is non-official information. You mean released to the towns or how, what do you mean? Released to the towns when everything's finalized for the surveys. Again, this is a work in progress that's not complete. And mm -hmm. when it's time for an official report to be done, there will be an official report completed. It's, tell me what CVPSA, Central Vermont Public Service, what does CVPSA stand for? It's a public service group that's been meeting for years, um, working on looking at dispatching services, where they combine some of the things for dispatching, how to make improvements to that. And our dispatching is still done through Montpelier? Our dispatching is done through Capital West, which is based out of Montpelier Police Department, yes. Okay, that's what I thought. That, he's, he's mentioned that a few times, something about that. And there's no intent to change that. We Okay. Any other questions on Capital West? I'm nope. sure there I'm sure there will I'm sure I will be sometime. But it's just it's just all of a sudden you get these very long emails and I read them, but I don't totally understand it. So Katie, did you have a question? Can I ask a quick question? I'm sorry, I kind of missed, like, does Capital West mean 
And I wanted to kind of summarize it, and I caught the details. Is Capital West itself a corporation, or is it an organization like you're talking about with all the all the towns that participate? Capital West is an organized group. It is an official organization, yes. So are those, those meetings you have, are they open to the public? Are there minutes? How does that work? They are open oh, meetings. Goodness. They are open to the public. There are minutes. Okay. So they must have a website then with all that information? Um, I can't actually answer that for you. I've never been on it if there is one. We receive the information direct because we participate in the meetings. Yeah. Well, I really, I really appreciate your giving us a little bit of background. It's very helpful. Rosa, I had a question. Rosa, yeah, a question. I, um, I just wanted to say that um, towards the end of my term on the select board, which would be the end of February, beginning of March, um, I was getting those emails too from that guy. And it sounded to me like he really just wanted to stir the pot and he really wanted to bring up old, old stuff like history. Um, he asked me what my connection was with the fire department. He asked me for documents, if I had this or that, or if I had minutes. Um, and so, you know, it, it was just, um, I don't know. I just got a bad vibe from him. And, um, you know, I just said, look at, I gave him the callous website and I said, you could find, you know, the minutes there. Um, but it just seemed to me like he was really just looking to stir the pot or stir up trouble. And I wasn't really clear on what his intent was in the end. Yeah. So, that's what I'm not, that's what I'm not clear on is I don't know what he, I don't know what he wants. Yeah. 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 Yep, exactly. Okay. okay. Any other questions on that? Uh, any um, other items that anybody any wants to add to the agenda for discussion tonight? Can't think of anything. Um, I guess I had another question. It's Rose here. Um, when the discussion about reopening the interlocal agreement or the contract and whatnot. Are those meetings going to be open to the public since I'm not on the board anymore? I think when Callis, when Callis has those discussions, um, I'm not sure yet, Rose, but if it's, a, it's about contracts, so we would probably go into executive session. Okay. And I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know. I think it's, I just think it's a good opportunity for you know everybody to look at things and review documents and mm -hmm. just think about it. Yep. Yep. Well, if I could provide any historical perspective, um, because I helped write that contract <laughs> with everybody. So um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I remember I definitely when, am interested in helping. Yeah, thank you, Rose. I remember when we did it too. Yep. Yep. But doesn't that um when does when does our agreement end that we have at the moment? Because we, I don't think we have a lot of time to get this done. I think that's kind of what um, Ty was saying is kind of wanting to get the ball rolling because it takes quite a lot of time and effort to redo these things. Right, the, I the think con, well, the, the contract the way that, ends on September first. That's why, right, and on. we're and we're required to give five months advance notice. Right. If we want to reopen it to discuss any issues, so that's what we did. Yeah, I, I assume you have issues identified and that'd be great when you can share them with the rest of us so we can get to work on this. Yeah, we certainly it does will. Take, it does take a lot of work to hammer out the new ones with lawyers and all. So that's just the, my concern is the busy time of year and it will take a few meetings to get the issues resolved, I assume. Yep. So. Does Callis have a timeline for presenting issues to the other two parties in the agreement? Um, not at this time, we don't, but we're gonna be working on it. Okay. So I don't have anything else to say. 
Uh, does anybody else from the East Montpelier Select Board have anything to offer? I mean, it's great that we everyone attended from the East Montpelier Select Board. Thank you, really. Uh, thank, thank you so much. It shows um, it shows that we have interest in what's going on with the fire department, and it's important that we participate in these meetings. So it was really nice that everyone showed up. I really appreciate it. Uh, but I think that we can adjourn our part of the meeting, perhaps. Thank you, everyone. As I said, we had a couple of select board members who had some last minute personal issues come up. So we usually have a forum, but I apologize that this time we didn't. And thank you so much, fire department and the ambulance for everything that you do. Yeah, thank you for educating me tonight too. I, it'll take a little while to get up to speed on all of this. So I really appreciate it. Nice okay. to meet you, Rick. Welcome aboard. Yeah, looking forward to working with all of you guys. I appreciate it. I think it's Melanie, but thank you, Melanie. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Toby, and the rest of the ambulance crew for the presentation. We always appreciate knowing what's going on and toss the numbers around, et cetera. So look forward to the next meeting, and I think that's it for us. Yep. I guess, Rick, we can adjourn. That sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice night. Thanks. Good night. Thank Bye. you, Melanie. Uh -huh. Beth, can I adjourn our meeting too? Yeah. No, I'm leaving. Good night, everybody. Good night, Good night Rose. Rose. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for participating. Oh, Good night, thank you. So, Carl, you made the motion?